Hello subscribers. Today I'm going to show you how to hack Pool of Radiance character files. So I'm using DOSBox version 0.74 and I'm going to be using a hex editor inside Windows 8. Now you can use any kind of hex editor. You could do this entirely in DOS if you'd like, but this is just a quicker way for me to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start the game so you can see the character files and see what we have. So from the menu I'm going to load Save Game A and let's just take a look at Dane for example. Okay so you'll notice 18, 45 strength, 15 intelligence, level 7, 82 hit points, 352 platinum. Okay so I'm going, going to go ahead and exit the game without saving. Now, I already have the hex editor open, and the particular file I'm looking at is savegameA.dat. You'll notice that the A is associated with the A when you play the game. So if you start scrolling down, you can see it's just binary data in there until you get toward the bottom you start to see the character file names so you, here we have chr data 1 chr data 2 etc so now we know the party member files that are in this particular file so i've already opened that in another view before so here is the char data one. It's the first character in the char data party. So here's Dane. You can see right there, clear text. Now you need a little lesson in how Intel processors work with hexadecimal. So we work with decimal numbers in real life all the time. That's numbers from zero to nine. Well, the computers like to work with binary, which is 0 or 1. So developers typically will work with hexadecimal, which is from 0 to 16 numbers. But since you can't represent any more than 10 numbers, 0 through 9, they start to introduce letters like A, B, C, D, E, and F. So hexadecimal really goes from 0 to F to represent the first 16 numbers. So right here, when we're looking at 12, that actually is 18 in hexadecimal. Let's look at the next one here, 0F. 0F would be 10, this would be 10, or I'm sorry, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So whatever this is, is in the number 16. So if we want to bump it to an 18, we simply put 12 there. If we wanted a 17, we would put a 1. If you want a 19, you can make it 13, as you can see. So 0C is 12. So how about we just update these values to make them all... 19. Now this 2D here, we need to bring up a calculator so that we can see what that means. So what I'm doing is bringing up the Windows calculator. We're going to go to programmer mode. Okay, so now we're in decimal mode, we need to flip over to hexadecimal so we can type in the 2D. And we want to see what this is in decimal mode. It's 45. So this number is 45. And as I was talking about things earlier, when I showed the party member, Dane, I don't remember seeing a 45 in there. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't one, I just couldn't see what it was in an obvious form. So we'll skip that one for now. 
Now we know his level was 7, correct? So here's a 7 here, but wait, look. We have another 7. Another 7. Let's see if there's any more. Okay. So those are the only 7s I'm seeing. So one of those is going to be his level. So let's just take a gamble. And let's make this... Let's make it a high number. Let's bring up our calculator. Let's say we want to make it his level 30, which Pool of Radiance limited the party members to basically level 7 or 8 in general. So we'll see if we can get around that. So 1E is the number 30. So let's try to change it to 1E. Now we're going to save. And I'm going to go back to DOSBox and we're going to run. And we're going to see if we changed anything properly. Now we have to load the correct save game because we modified save game A. So there, go ahead and load it. And sure enough, if you look, I hadn't touched strength, but I did modify intelligence, wisdom, and all the other attributes. And look at his level, level 30. Now let's do something a little more advanced. His experience level is, or his experience points are 92,496. Now this is where the strange behavior of the Intel processor comes in. It has its bits ordered in what's called Big Endian format, which means the big numbers or toward the end of the string. So what we're going to have to do is convert this number to hexadecimal but then reverse every two sets of numbers and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So 92,496. 2,496. So in hexadecimal this is the value 16,950. But that's not how an Intel processor is going to show this. So first let me exit here. Let's bring our hex editor back up. So we are looking for, you would think, 16950. But that's not how it's going to be displayed. So what we're going to do is look for a 50 first of all. And there's one right there. Now, we should see a 69 in front of it to the left, but look, it's not. It's to the right. And the reason is, once again, because Intel uses big Indian format. Motorola processors use little Indian, which would have made it look proper. But since we're using Intel-based processors, and that's what DOS ran on, it's reversed. So now we're looking for 506901. It's always two sets of numbers for hexadecimal. So there we go. See, it's backwards. It's 506901. So what we're going to do is change these values, and that is going to give much more experience to the party member. Now keep in mind that... I'm going to reopen this since I accidentally modified it there. Okay. So this 01 is the high end. So that's the biggest part of the number. So we're just going to bump that up to a 3, which is essentially is going to make this number at least three times larger. It's going to be much bigger. So now I'll go ahead and save it. Go back to DOSBox. Let's run the game. load our saved game now look at his experience pretty cool huh so this would be a way where you could leave the level at one you could bump the experience up to whatever you wanted and then you could just train at the guild and level up now what about platinum what if we wanted to modify platinum once again we go back to decimal mode, we type in 352, 
Because look, that's what he has. Convert to hex. So since we're in an Intel, we're going to be looking at 6001. Let's see if we can find it. 6001. There it is. So we can give him any amount of platinum we want. Let's give him five times the amount. Now I'm guessing that this 0A is associated with gems because 10 in hexadecimal is 0A. Jewelry is a 9 here, which is still the number 9 in hexadecimal. So see how these two values are pretty close to the platinum? I'm sure the developers made the values pretty close by there. Now the question is, did they make this where a single byte represented the gems? So in other words, the most we could have is 255 gems. If that's the case, FF is the largest number you can have in hexadecimal, which means 255. Or did they use two bytes? If they use two bytes, then we could also put in some values here in this 00, zero slot to go beyond the 255 boundary. Then our maximum is 65,535. So let's just take a gamble and assume that they use two bytes. So I'm going to put a two in here. Once again, I think this is probably jewelry. So let's give at least 255 there. And let's put a five in there. And we'll see if it accepts this. If it doesn't, we could always come back in here and change this five back to a zero and change the two back to a zero. But I'm going to save this. I'm going to exit the game. We're going to reload. And we're going to see if they use two bytes for jewelry and gems. And sure enough, they did. Because, see, we exceeded 255. So now we have a ridiculous amount of jewelry and a ridiculous amount of gems. And, of course, we had bumped platinum. Now look at our encumbrance level. That is calculated on the fly. So that's not a number that's saved in the actual file. Now let's notice that his armor class, I don't know if you noticed this before, it was minus one. And that's because the dexterity was not 19. But now that we bumped it to 19, it calculated on the fly to reduce his armor class to minus three because he's much faster. So, those D&D nerds out there like me know the highest you can have is 25 for a given attribute. So let's see if we bump all of these to 25, what ends up happening. Pay attention to the Thaco and the damage. 1d2 plus 3. Okay. Alright, so here's our strength. Now we need the number 25. So what is that in hexadecimal? Let's find out. It's 19. So here we go. Save. Let's go back, run the game. Dane will now have 25 with all of his attributes, and we will see if Pool of Radiance accounts for a level this high, because there's no way you can get values this high normally in the game. It's just not possible. But, sure enough, they are accounting for some of them. The Thaco is now 6 instead of 12, so it took into account a ridiculously high strength. Also, look at the damage. It was 1d2 plus 3. We're doing plus 14 damage now because of our strength. Plus, our armor class actually dropped another 2. So, for some of the attributes, they are accounting for this high of a level, even though it's not possible to get it normally in the game. That's pretty amazing. These developers deserve a slap on the back for that one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of hacking Pool of Radiance character files, and I'll see you next time.